I'm here with Rob Stewart at the Vancouver International Film Festival to talk about his movie, Revolution. So, Rob, tell me a little bit about your movie. Revolution's a film about the evolution of life, 3.5 billion years in the making, through five major extinctions, culminating in humans in the midst of a revolution to save ourselves. And it sort of follows Sharkwater style a little bit, where you follow me ripping around the world, getting into a bunch of trouble, trying to figure out how we're going to survive this extinction. That's great, and, and you know, you've done Shark Water. Uh, that came out in 2005, I believe, or 2007. Seven. 2007 took you about four and a half years or so to make this movie. How come it took you so long to make it? There's a lot of work that goes into them. Uh, we filmed Revolution in 15 countries, and this one took four years. So, you know, it's a, it's a pretty big topic. You know, this is sort of the biggest story that I know of, you know, what's happening to humans, where we've come from, where we're going, and how we're going to, you know, get out of potentially the biggest crisis humanity's ever faced, and pos positioning that as a positive and making sure everyone comes out of the movie inspired to want to change the world and get involved was really important to us, and so we wanted to give people, you know, the most epic journey possible, and figuring out how to tell that story took a while. And why did you want to take, tell this specific story? By the time we were done uh, traveling the world with Sharkwater, we'd been to some of the biggest environmental conferences in the world and met some of the world's top scientists, and they said, what you're doing with sharks is cool, but you're missing the point. Like, we're going to lose everything. Citing studies that predict the end of the world's fisheries, the loss of the world's coral reefs, the loss of all the world's rainforest by the middle of the century, at which point we'll have 9 billion people on a planet that's struggling to feed 7 billion people. So it became pretty clear to us that conservation's changed, and, you know, I can't just focus on saving sharks because, you know, starving people will fish the last fish for food. And it became, you know, an, a story of, you know, how are we going to save ourselves? What do we need to do to save the humans? And uh, I thought, you know, this is a story I've got to tell. I've got to get this message to the world. And it is a very universal story, but yet it is a Canadian film. So what's sort of the Canadian perspective that, that is brought to the film? We traveled through 15 countries all over the world to the most remote regions and to meet some of the world's top scientists, and it actually ended up being my own backyard, which was one of the most devastating environmental atrocities around the, around the world. Um, we have the tar sands in Canada, which is the single biggest emitter of carbon dioxide on the planet, the largest, most destructive industrial project of its kind. And... We know the emissions of carbon dioxide we put into the atmosphere make the oceans more acidic, and in more acidic environments, animals that build skeletons can't form, and that includes phytoplankton, which gives us more than half of the oxygen in the air that we breathe, coral reefs, home to 25% of the world's species, and fish that we depend on for food. So, you know, we're emitting massive amounts of carbon dioxide when we already know it's having de devastating consequences on ecosystems, species, humans, countries. So... The Canadian perspective of this actually surprised me. There wasn't supposed to be a Canadian part to this movie, but it, uh, it became a pretty shocking, shocking stat. And I know there's some really interesting animals in this uh, movie, some that maybe haven't been seen before and some that are supposed to be really, really cute. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about those? To get people to fall in love with life the way I see life, because it's life that gives us our food, our water, and our air. We wanted to give people the most charismatic creatures on the planet. So we introduced people to things that live in the deep, dark depths of the oceans, into phytoplankton, into zooplankton. Uh, one species of cuttlefish people have been falling in love with called the flamboyant cuttlefish. It's like a... It's like a little squid octopus combination that's this big, that's highly intelligent, smarter than house cats. They communicate using their arms as, uh, to sign language. They use their bodies as banners for their emotions. And they're sort of the pinnacle of cephalopod evolution. And we also filmed shafakas and lemurs in Madagascar, which people found pretty cute, and lynx in Canada, and quite a few of the, basically the most charismatic and cool animals that I know of. And in a way, I mean, you're with Shark Water, with Revolution, you are kind of start trying to start a revolution in terms of how people look at the environment. Uh, why is the medium of documentary filmmaking what you've chosen to use? Why is that the effective medium? We got Sharkwater seen by 124 million people, and I think that number is still going to grow as we continue to push it. And right now we're in a time where I think awareness is the biggest missing ingredient in you know, saving ourselves. Every revolution in the past, be it cultural, racial, gender equality, everybody knew the kind of change we needed in the world. And right now only a fraction of the planet knows what's going on environmentally, You know, knows that our individual actions, our governments and our corporations are sort of running away with the world we depend on for survival. And the kind of change we need in the world is bigger than the kind 
kind of cart we drive and the kind of light bulbs we use. It's it's revolutionary. It's massive. We got to change the system, change the way we think, change the way we live. And so, if we can educate everybody and bring everybody, you know, onto the same page, then we can usher in that kind of change. So, I think you know, using documentaries and using film as a form of art to change the world is sort of the best thing we can do.